Hello, friends. We are getting ready to enter into our 2022 doctrinal study. Annually, every year, we take part in a doctrinal study. Um, and this is a great time for you and friends or you and your D group to dig into a specific topic as we look at it together as a church. Um, in the past few years, we've looked at fasting. We've looked at the um, image of God and humans. And this year, we're going to be taking part in a study of the attributes of God. So as we get ready for that, I'm going to pray for us um, during this season, during this doctrinal study over the next three weeks, and then we'll get going looking at the attributes of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this chance to come and study your word together. I ask that you would be with us, that we gain a greater understanding of you, who you are, how you want to interact with us, um, how we should worship you better, or how we can worship you better as we get to know you better. So thanks again that you guide this time. Let our study be fruitful. Let our discussions be fruitful. Um, and above all, let it bring glory to your name. It's the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. The gospel singer Helen Baylor, in her song, Lord, You're Holy, has a refrain where she rattles off several descriptors of God. She proclaims of God that he is wonderful, glorious, holy, and righteous, victorious, conqueror, triumphant, and mighty, healer, deliverer, shield, and defense, Strong tower and my best friend, omnipotent, omnipresent, soon coming king, alpha, omega, lord of everything, holy, holy, holy is your name. And in this song, many of these descriptors are found that we call attributes. When we think about God, the traits in the scriptures that we know to be true of him are his attributes. Now, over the course of this month, we'll be looking at several attributes of God so that we can get to know him more fully. When God is our Father, we should not be satisfied with secondhand information or cultural assumptions about Him. Rather, we should desire to know Him as He has revealed Himself to us in Scripture. And if we dedicate the rest of our lives to studying the attributes of God, we wouldn't exhaust all that the Scriptures have to say to us. So where do we begin? Where do we begin with our study about the attributes of God and who God is? Naturally, we begin in the beginning. In Genesis Chapter 1, it's Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 is going to be our primary verse this week. And it reads as such, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If hearing that verse being read keyed you into a focus on the attribute creator, you are absolutely right. But that's the second attribute that we will be studying. There is one contained in this verse that comes prior to God as creator. Look at the text again. In the beginning, God. Before there is creation, there is God. Before our universe and our world, all that we see and understand, there is God. Which points us to the attribute that God is eternal. To say that God is eternal is, is to say that God has always been and God will always be. He is not confined to the space and time restrictions that we are. The psalmist said well in Psalm chapter 90 verse 2, Before the mountains were born or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. From everlasting to everlasting. To be eternal is to be God, and to be God is to be eternal. Now, this is going to be true of many of the attributes we will study of God. They are definitional of God, and only God possesses these attributes. He's the only one who this is true of. These types of attributes are called non-communicable attributes because they belong only to God. He is the only possessor of them. But God also possesses what is known as communicable attributes, meaning those that humans can possess as well. It should also be noted that oftentimes in our thinking, we can lose focus on the Trinitarian nature of the Godhead. But friends, we must understand that if, it's, if an attribute is true of the Father, then it's true of the Son, and it is true of the Spirit. And Genesis chapter 1 verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 told us, In the beginning, God. In like manner, John 1, 1 tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That, that term Word that we see there in the Greek is the term Logos, and we know that it refers to Jesus. So this verse clearly tells us that our eternal Lord and Savior was present with the Father in the beginning before creation. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it says, and the earth was a, form, was form, a formless and desolate emptiness, and the darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And so we see a description of the Spirit there hovering in Genesis 1-2, and the work of creation begins in Genesis 
The triune God is eternal from everlasting to everlasting. Why is that good news or why is that important for us? There are many key reasons why that is, but one key one is that our God is not fallible. He cannot be killed and he will always be on the job. If he said he would be there to fulfill a promise, he will be there to fulfill that promise. And that is an eternal big deal to all of us who have believed in his son. Because in John chapter 3, verse 16, we're told, in the beginning was the word. And, or rather, we're told, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. If we do not have an eternal God, we have no hope of eternal life. But in the beginning, God. Now, the B clause of Genesis 1-1 brings their second attribute to us. So let's look at Genesis 1-1 again. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so the word beginning, in its, the word beginning itself finds its substance in the fact that God created. If, if the eternal God didn't choose that point in history to create, what we know of as the beginning of time would not exist. But God is a creator, and thus he creates. Look at Genesis 1, 3. It says, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. At his word, light appeared. This highlights a truth to us about God's creation. He is creating out of nothing. It's the term ex nihilo, out of nothing. The text does not say, God said, let there be light, and then he flipped on the light switch. No, it says, he said, let there be light, and then there was light. God created everything out of nothing at his word. And again, it's the triune God that we see creating. We see the spirit present in verse 2, um, right as creation gets ready to begin. And then things start popping off in verse 3. But what about the sun? Is the sun present at creation? Again, from John chapter 1, we see this. John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. And so we're told that Jesus was there in the beginning with God, and that all things came into being through him. And there's not one thing that's come into being that did not come into being through him, meaning all things were created by Jesus. And Jesus is there very much present. And this isn't just John's revelation. This is the scripture's revelation, the scripture's witness throughout. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, in verse 15, we see, speaking of Jesus, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Now we must make a note that in verse 15, where it says he's the firstborn of all creation, this is not to say that he was the first thing created, but this is just a sense um, of ordering, the way Paul used the text to order that Jesus was there before creation. So this is not to say that Jesus was created, but that Jesus was there before creation as we know it was brought into being. He then goes on to speak of him. In his work in creation, for by him all things were created, both in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. So the physical world and the spiritual world was brought about through the work of Jesus. Verse 16 says, all things have been created through him and for him. So Christ was very much present at creation. And in fact, all things were created through him and created for him, and that includes you. Friend, you were made for him to do what he pleases with your life for his glory. Now, there's much more that we could say about God as creator, but I'll highlight two things for you. And first, bear with me as we read the creation account, the condition of God's creation. The condition of God's creation. Beginning in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. 
And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning one day. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separate the waters that were below the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning a second day. And then God said, let the waters below the heavens be gathered in, into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit according to their kind with seed in them, and it was so. And the earth produced vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them according to their kind, and God saw that it was good. Then there was evening, and there was morning a third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and they shall serve as signs and for seasons and for days and years. And they shall serve as lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, and it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning a fourth day. Then God said, let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth in the open expanse of the heavens. And God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the water swarmed according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the sea and let the birds multiply in the earth. And there was evening and there was morning a fifth day. Then God said, let the earth produce living creatures according to their kind, livestock and crawling things and animals of the earth according to their kind, and it was so. And God made the animals of the earth according to their kind and the livestock according to their kind and everything that crawls on the ground according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every crawling thing that crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth and every tree which has fruit yielding seed and it shall be food for you. And to every animal of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that moves on the earth which has life, I have given every green, green plant for food and it was so. And God saw all that he made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And so the heavens and the earth were completed and all their heavenly lights. By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because on that day he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. I hope you clued in on a word that was repeated over and over in the creation account. And as you clue in on some words, I hope you say that one of those words is the word good. The eternal creator God is perfect and holy and thus everything he created was good. And by good, we don't mean all right, but not great. No, those modern distinctions do not apply here. No, God's creation was perfect and it can only be described as good. Secondly, this attribute of God, his being creator, makes it known to all people everywhere that he exists, even if they do not have the specific revelation of the Bible. In Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 18, we find this. For the wrath of, wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is, eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their reasonings, and their senseless hearts were darkened. 
Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible mankind, of birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them up to vile impurity in the lust of their hearts, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for falsehood and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And so what this shows us and what this makes known to us is that God has made himself known through creation. His eternal power and divine nature are known through what he has made, and thus people are without excuse. Even worse, people chose to worship his creation rather than to worship him as the creator. And any time we choose to place something above God from our world, we fall into that same trap of worshiping the creation over the creator. Now, this carries with it a very real weight of accountability, but it also gives us an open door to evangelism. When people look on the beauty and the majesty of creation and, and are just enamored with it, we have the privilege to let them know, if you think what you see is great, let me tell you about the one who made it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God is both eternal and creator. Let me pray for you before you get into your discussion time. Lord, again, we come to you thanking you for your word, that you give us the ability to study it, that you give us the ability to know you, to have a relationship with you. I ask that as we enter into these discussion times that follow this, that they be fruitful, that you help us to find your truth that you have for us contained within your scriptures, and that through it we worship you better, we find new ways to evangelize those around us who can acknowledge that there's a creator because there's a creation, but don't quite know all the truth about you that we know. Again, just guide us in this process and use this doctrinal study to form us into who and what you would have us to be. It's the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.